got a special bonus issue of the Lockdown Giants podcast for you this weekend. Hondo Carpenter of Raiders Today joins us. And we're going to talk a little bit about Jermaine Illuminor. We're going to talk a little bit about Carmen Brasillo. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the potential direction that the New York Giants are headed in next month's draft. That's coming your way next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to a special edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Traina, credentialed member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as for Giants country over on the Fan Nation Network. And I'd like to send a special welcome to my Blue Crew community members, my everydayers, and everybody in between. You are all appreciated and loved by yours truly. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day, or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day, or if we're not your first listener watch, thank you for tuning in all the same. It is appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little notification bell. Like the video. It helps us tremendously. And on today's Locked on Giants podcast, I'm welcoming in Hondo Carpenter. Now, I've had him on the show before. Hondo is the site publisher over for Raiders Today, which is the sister site of Giants Country on the Fan Nation Network. Hondo is very well connected. He's been doing this a long time, probably longer than I have, um, covering the NFL and doing such a high-level job. And Hondo is going to give us a little bit of insight on the Giants' new offensive lineman acquired in free agency, Jermaine Illuminor. He's also going to talk a little bit about Carmen Brasillo and just, you know, how Brasillo can take that offensive line and get them to play at a much higher level than what we might have seen in years past. And then finally, we're also going to talk a little bit about some leftover nuggets that were picked up at the combine. Now at the combine, everybody is all over the place talking to different people. You know, I've heard from different people. Hondo has heard from different people and he was most generous in saying to me, Hey, Pat, I'm going to share with you what I heard regarding your team. So that's all coming up on this special edition of the Locked on Giants podcast. Without any further ado, let's get right into it with my special guest, Hondo Carpenter of Raiders Today. Hondo, welcome on into the podcast. Thank you, Patricia. It's always good to be on with my Sports Illustrated Fan Nation publishers. <clears throat> Appreciate being with you. And getting to talk about one of my best, my favorite subjects, Carmen Basillo, who's a great friend, and Jermaine Illuminor, who is a great friend of mine as well. Yeah, it's a good day for the land of the G-Men, and it's always good to talk to the queen of the Meadowlands, <laughs> Patricia Trina. Oh, you are so kind. And Hondo, yeah. I am so excited about Jermaine's edition. You know, I've been... I've been seeing on Twitter how excited he is to come here. Let's start there if we could. What can you tell my listeners about Jermaine Illuminor and, and what he brings to the table? Well, first, Jermaine Illuminor is a lot of things. He comes from Great Britain, so he's going to be a, you're going to love him in the locker room. Oh, my goodness. He is so funny in the locker room. He has a very British sense of humor. Um. And he's very personable. Uh, he's a guy that really will love the community. He will go on Twitter and interact with fans um, and, and have a lot of fun. He's a guy that's going to speak his mind. So he, he, he's going to fit in, in Gotham, um, where we know people like to speak their mind, and I like that. Um, he's a guy that's versatile. He can play inside. He can play outside. He is a typical, prototypical Carmen Brasillo player. If you're not a superstar at one position, then you have to play multiple positions or you won't play for Carmen. He loves to have guys with position flexibility. And that is exactly what Jermaine Illuminor is. Now, that is why when I first came on your program to talk about you guys getting Carmen, that was a devastating loss 
to the Raiders, but it would not have happened without Antonio Pierce's blessing. I mean, Antonio Pierce's pitcher is all over the building and, and nothing happens with New York. If, if Pierce is connected without them talking to him and Antonio gave nothing but his highest praise for him. That's why I laughed when somebody did a hit piece on Carmen Basolo in the New York media about how it was hated in the building. Well, then how come the free agent linemen all wanted to go with them to New York if they couldn't resign with the Raiders? I mean, I, I literally had a couple of Raiders reach out to me mocking the piece. Wow, I, I didn't know for a guy I loved so much, I hated him, LOL. And it was just, it was fascinating and interesting. And I just explained to him, you know, in a large market, you got to do everything you can to distance yourself from everybody else. And I guess sometimes that means even writing things that are absurd to people that are in the know. But um, it was a great addition. Uh, I know that you were on it, talking about him being a top target of the Giants. Um, in fact, I even saw some people that were critical of you, and I kind of giggled because and yes, I know I'm a grown man that used the word giggle, but that's literally how I felt. I said, wow, I guess that person's not in the know. And I just muted him as a mute media member because the queen of the Meadowlands knows what's going on. And look at first day, I mean, first part of free agency, he gets signed. So Luminor brings you a guy. There's a lot of versatility there. He can play different positions. He's a Swiss army knife. I think that's good. Now, I do think it's hurt him that because of injuries, he's had to play a lot of places and just hasn't able to be settled. Um, now, I'll give you another example. The Raiders have Thayer Mumford last year, and they were hoping Thayer would beat Jermaine out. And so going into camp, Jermaine was the one, he was the two. They gave a lot just because he was older and more expensive. And Thayer played well, but Jermaine just didn't give up his spot was solidified at tackle and, you know, played very well. He's a guy, um, you know, I always laugh, and you'll get a kick out of this because you know this is true. There are so many great plays in a game. And so you can pick out a mistake a guy makes or if you're going against a great player. And I'll, I'll give you a good one. I had a one of the best players in NFL history, a Hall of Famer, once tell me, if you played against Barry Sanders, there's tape of you looking stupid. And so people will take one one clip, but they don't show numerous clips where he just performed at a high level. I can tell you the Raiders did want him. The Raiders wanted him back, but the Giants really listened to Carmen and prioritized him. Now, here's the other thing he's going to do. He's going to come in and help your other offensive linemen who want help, not teaching them because they, they got the NFL because they know how to play, but just really having them understand what Carmen's looking for. Um, and because he's personal and not arrogant, he's going to get along great with your other offensive lineman whose heart's in the right place. It's a great addition. And uh, for the Giants, I think the Giants just got better. And it's a guy that the Raiders wanted, and the Giants were willing to pay more. So good for them. You know, you've mentioned Carmen several times, and you mentioned how he likes position flexibility, how he likes a certain type of player. And, you know, it, it sounds to me like Jermaine is just like an extension of Carmen. Is that an accurate reading? Um, yes and no. He's an extension of Carmen. First of all, they're very close. He's an extension of Carmen because he offers what Carmen wants, which is versatility. But he's he's different. Um, Jermaine is gregarious. Um, Jermaine is, a, he loves fans and he'll talk to them. Carmen loves fans, but he's more of a, 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 of, of a guy that, you know, you're not going to see him go up to a press conference and, and win a press conference. He's going to answer every question. He's going to, he's very genuine, but he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily have that personality that I'm going to sit there and woo you. Some guys, it's almost like you're thinking, okay, he wants the media to love him. Carmen's very comfortable in his own skin. Um, Carmen is a guy that that he knows what he's done. He knows what, what he can do. He's he's going to go there and be super respectful. Um, I But I wouldn't say he's as playful as Jermaine. Now, I consider Carmen not only a friend, I consider him a good friend. And so 
when I, when we get together, the conversation isn't always football. It's, it's talking about other things, but you don't see him almost gregarious, but you certainly see him happy. And like, I'll give you a great example. I wrote an article several months ago about how the offensive line looked at him and admired him and honored him. And he would say to his players all the time, gentlemen, we spend more time together than with the people we love. So when you get home, make sure you're spending time with your wife, loving your kids. And I cannot tell you, I've had more than one player tell me he made me a better husband. He made me a better father. Um, one player told me I didn't have a dad. And he came up to me one day and said, hey, I know you like to go out and I know you like to have fun, but what, where's your time with your family? And the player said, I didn't even realize it, that I was still acting single. And he really, and now that player, great relationship with his children, great relationship with his wife. And, and so for Carmen, he's a guy that's very comfortable in his skin. He's not out there trying to win the next job. He's not out there trying to say, hey, look at me. I'm, if you ask Carmen, what is he most proud of in his life? And he has so many accomplishments at pro football level. He's made more money in the NFL than most people will make in a lifetime. He's going to tell you about his beautiful wife. He's going to talk to you about his new baby and, and his children. And, and so he keeps it on that level with his players. They're very, very close. Um, I had one player after that hit piece came out that said to me this that was angry because it's just bs and he said i can go to carmen about anything i'll never forget a player went to carmen about opening a checking account mm -hmm. he did he didn't even he had grown up in a generation where everybody used a debit card and and carmen helped him and it is a role someone said do you think it's a fatherly role I think some people look at it that way, but Carmen looks at it. I'm just your big brother. And in this room, we can be brutally honest. I'll tell you another great story about Carmen. He believes if one player screws up, that's on the player. But if you start to have multiple players screwing up, it's on him. Because evidently, because not everyone's that way. And I'll tell you how he won the Raiders uh, offensive line room. Early in his tenure, they were playing a game, and it was a preseason game. And so the next day they come in for film, and he's livid, and the, Ra and the Raiders had not played well. And they're like, oh, God, here we go. And they walked in. He goes, I just want to tell you right now, I failed you guys. And they watched the film. And when they got done, he said, when one of you screws up or maybe two of you, I can put that on you. But, guys, when you're struggling, I'm not, not teaching the scheme. He was very angry, very angry himself and so he went back and just began to teach it again and that next game they they looked completely different that's him he invests in people he cares about people people matter i've watched him go over to players that aren't even on the offensive line specialty or skill guys on defense and walk over and say hey you know what you seem down what's going on is there anything i can do for you and to help guys there he's a very calming influence He's very demanding. This is exactly what I expect. This is what you're going to give me. We're paying you a lot of money. This is what we will get, period. Unacceptable. And he'll stay on a guy till he gets it. But years ago, I heard it said this way. You can call a guy and up and say, you effed up. But to call a guy an F up is different. And this is a guy raised by his mom and who understands I can be very demanding of you and still love you. And he does. And his players love him. They don't like him. They love him. I, I, I said this on one of your podcasts before, but I, I need to say it again because I know your audience is growing exponentially because you do so well. The players say this about Carmen. You can play for coaches, but we play with Carmen. They see him as part of that offensive line. And and that is the way that he gets in there because he's hard on himself. When he talks to a player, you know, what why are you why do you keep making this mistake? And I know of one particular player when he looked at him and goes, "Wait a minute. 
you're doing it. Why? And they told him, and he goes, that's on me. I didn't teach you how to do that right. I take full responsibility. And then in team film session, when the coach is calling our player, Carmen will lift his hand and go, no, coach, that's on me. I, I didn't teach that right. And the players all are like, did he really just do that in front of the team? Ain't never had a coach ever do that before. That's Carmen. And he builds respect. I can tell you on the Raiders, at other positions, offense, defense, they knew who Carmen was. They respected Carmen. He was a very popular coach in that locker room. Accountability. Gee, what a novel thought. And but but here's the deal. He holds himself. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and respectfully say this. And and and, and Patricia, you and I are friends outside of what we do. And I know that you have a great audience and you can tell them whether or not I'm being sincere or genuine or not. But what when I, I'm not a giant hater. And so for me, every I remember growing up cutting my teeth on you knew the G men had an offensive line that worked in total unanimity. It, it was it, they just worked as one. It was a beautiful thing. You knew the G-men could run the ball, great defense, great offensive line. So when you've watched them as of late, they don't even look like the G-men. It's almost like who's impersonating the Giants? Why, why are they doing this? To me, there was no more old school Giant hire than Carmen Brasillo. Now let's go back for a minute. Patrick Graham comes to you guys and looked terrible. Now, he was great before he got to you. But he had a head coach because you guys made a terrible hire who wanted things done a certain way. So when the Raiders got him from you guys, I wrote, it's a great day in Raider Nation. This man should be a head coach. And... People are like, but the but the Giants fan hated him. Yep, because Giant fan didn't realize the guy had a boss. He gets here now. He's interviewing for head coaching jobs. He's probably, in my opinion, if not the best, he's among three guys that you'd consider the best general man, just defensive minds in all the NFL. And it wasn't that he was bad with the Giants. It was that everybody had a boss. He had to do what the boss wanted. And so I would really encourage giant fans to be excited that it appears that with Carmen, you got an old school giant guy. And I hope that your leadership allows Carmen to be that, to be what he is because he's very good. But as you saw with Patrick Graham, good coaches aren't good when they're not allowed to be good or when you go get, you know, you don't invest and go get good players. And I, I what's going to be interesting to be to see, and this is more of a question for you, Patricia, than me, because I don't know your personnel. If you don't have a bunch of guys committed to being great, who are hard workers and accountable, you're, they're, they're not going to like Carmen. But as they turn it over, if they have to, and bring some guys in, uh, you're going to see a difference in that offensive line. I, I hope that's not the case. I hope that you got a bunch of guys like that because I think it'll be fun. I think the NFL is a better product when the G-men are good. You know, for example, not a Cowboy fan. I think the NFL is better when the Cowboys are good. Not a Giants fan, but I think the NFL is better when the Giants are good, when the Packers are good, when, when, when the Raiders are good. I think there are certain iconic franchises that the NFL is better when they're good. And so if you love the game and you love the product, you want to see them good. I'm hoping that for the Giants. I want them to be good. And I and I, I think that you took a big step towards good. Hopefully, you're going to be able to turn on the film week eight, week nine this year and say, wow, the Giants are starting to look like a New York G-men offensive line. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, 
Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Can I share a little bit about Carmen that I haven't said before, but I don't, I'll just go ahead. Let me tell you how uh, I had an NFL general manager once tell me he looked at personnel. And I was sitting down with an NFL general manager and I said, how do you rate your assistant coaches? And this is what he told me. He goes, if I have an assistant coach that nobody wants, then every year when I do my evaluations, I ask my head coach, why does nobody want him? <laughs> and the head coach may say, well, he's older. And so they know he's not moving or whatever. He goes, but if there is not a legitimate reason why nobody, nobody wants that coach, I'm already developing a short list to replace him. And he said, I want everybody on my staff to have multiple teams that want him. Now, I thought that was a brilliant analysis and I'm going somewhere with this. What the G-men, and more importantly, the G-men fan base should know is that Harmon had multiple opportunities to go other places. He wasn't booted out in Las Vegas, and he had multiple opportunities to go. Someone said to me, then why do you think he would leave Las Vegas? I think because he had come in with Josh McDaniels, that he was probably just uh, the appearance of being too close to Josh probably wasn't going to give him a fair shake. But I want you to know, he could have went a lot of places. He picked the G-men. You know, my wife is exceptionally beautiful. She's a and inside and out. She is, as far as I'm concerned, she is the greatest human being on planet Earth. I met her on September 9th in 1981. It was a Wednesday. I was 10. She was 8. Went home, told my dad, met my wife. Um, mm -hmm. She's just the finest human being, mother, everything that I know. And I always say to her, you had so many options. I have no idea why you picked me, but I appreciate it. And I, and I told her the day we got married, my goal in life is that when I die, that you not say to God, why did you stick me with him? And so I, I, I've always admired people who have lots of options to watch what they pick. I've always admired that. And Carmen had a lot of options. So if you're the G-men, there have been a lot of times in recent years where you hired people that you were the only option. You just got a guy that chose you. You just got a guy that said, no, that's an iconic franchise. You just got a guy that wouldn't be in New York had not one of your greatest players, Antonio Pierce, not, not vouched for him. And this is a good one. And I hope the G-Men fan base treasures him and what he's going to do and what he's going to bring because he picked you. And I think sometimes, and, and I saw this when they played this year, it almost seemed, and I have a lot of friends that are that are big fans of the Giants. And I always, it seems as of late that that fan base has just been beat down. And it's almost like whatever happens, it doesn't matter. They almost have gone fatalistic. When I was growing up, it didn't matter what the G-men did. You knew they were going to be good. And now it's almost seems like after years of struggling, they've almost forgotten who they are. 
And I want to challenge the, the your fan base. There's one of my favorite movies is The Lion King. And there's this scene, and now that I'm older, I'm 52, but I've adopted a uh, 53 now. I got sorry, but now that I've adopted a baby, I'm back to watching little kid stuff. And I, the movie Lion King. So there's this little baby cub, and his dad dies, and he's going through a difficult time trying to figure out who he is. And he looks in the water, and he sees his dad's reflection, telling him, "Remember who you are." I want to see the G Men Nation remember who you are. Be, remember to say, wait a minute, I'm not being fatalistic. We're the freaking giants. We're supposed to be good. People aren't supposed to look at us on the schedule and pencil in a win. It's supposed to be a physical, teeth rattling, beat them up fight. I mean, I'm, I love Carl Banks. I'm friends with Carl Banks. That, that, that's the era that I love. I mean, I remember when Tico Duckett, was your running back. And Tico's a great friend of mine. Devin Thomas, uh, Antonio. Remember who you are. And hold your franchise to that standard. Don't be fatalistic. Some good things are, are, are brewing. I know that they're not great today, but things are brewing. I think there's a lot of optimism. This, I'm going to be completely blunt. I was shocked Carmen picked the Giants. Not because they're the Giants, but because of what that franchise had become. I was a little shocked, but there's great reverence to that franchise by Carmen. He loves that franchise, loves what they stand for, wants to be part of bringing them back. You're not going to find a lot of those people. And, and you know what? I found one in my wife who's Lowell, who's loving and kind. And you got one of them in Carmen, man. I hope you treasure them. Hey, Giant fans, say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, you name it. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Let's kind of pivot a little bit because obviously the, the combine was a couple of weeks ago. You, you, you were making the rounds, you know, everybody making the rounds and you heard some stuff, I, I believe, uh, that might be of interest to giant fans. Yeah, I am not buying. I think that the G men, are not going to pick a quarterback to just pick a quarterback. But I believe that there is there is a potential that they if if, if he's there, and I'm not sure he's going to be there. But if JJ McCarthy were to fall to the G men, I don't think they pass him up at all. Um listen, Daniel Jones, I'm not hating on the guy. All everybody I know who knows him says he's a he's a good kid. But it is about that. This is we're not looking for high school teachers. We're looking for NFL franchise quarterbacks. I'm going to tell you a great thing about JJ. First of all, well over a month ago, probably six or seven weeks ago, I did my first mock draft, and I had the Raiders picking JJ McCarthy in the second round. I had an NFL executive tell me if the draft were today, this is where you would get him. But after pro days and after combines and people really get to do their investigation this guy said to me we have him number one on our board and by the way this mm -hmm. is an, an NFL executive who's picked more than one first round quarterback and been successful and oh by the way they don't need a quarterback this year he goes but we have him as number one on our board and it's not even close they only mm -hmm. had two guys with first round grades and McCarthy was the best the other they had with a low first round grade um I think he's the steal of the draft and if the if the G men pick him up now, let me give you a couple of things about JJ McCarthy. He's the only one of the quarterbacks in this draft who's run a pro style offense, so there's going to be no adjustment on a regular basis. Number two, he did not throw a million passes because he didn't run a wide open offense at Michigan. But if you have any concerns, let me tell you about a general manager who now is hot on his trail. Told me 
He goes, I put the tape in in the national in, in the in the national playoff game against Alabama. He's got Terry and Arnold and Kool Aid McKinstry, two first round corners, some first round safeties. He goes, he's he's going against three first round defensive backs. And all of them, all of the defensive backs are NFL guys. All of them are going to play in the NFL and tore them up. He And I'll give you another one. I know another team that interviewed him, and they give him an iPad. And they show several different teams disguising on a pre-snap, um, saying, what do you read here? What's your pre-snap read? So he's given out the reads. He was the only quarterback of all of them that they talked to who, who got all eight pre-snap reads correct. And like when they asked him about one, well, what makes you think that safety isn't blitzing? He's showing blitz. Look at his back foot, his heels off the ground. He, I mean, he, he's getting ready to backpedal. Little things. Wow. And this is a guy who's ready to play. Um, I think if you pick J.J. McCarthy, I have zero doubts by the end of next season, he's your starter in, in New York. And, and, uh, I, a kid to me, I don't have enough praise. And I think the G-men are, are on him heavy. Uh, it would make sense. I mean, look, you know, they want to give Daniel Jones another shot, but you got to take into consideration Daniel Jones's injury history. And that's got to be a Here's big the other concern. thing, though. You can't be the G-men and have one option. This has nothing to do with, well, Daniel, you know, Daniel may get upset. I don't give a rat's rear with it. He's got 80 million reasons to not be upset. This isn't about comfort and consoling. You owe your ticket base. You owe your fans who support and make this franchise so freaking financially viable to say, listen, we want Daniel to have another shot. Okay, I'm good with that. I have no issue with that. But if he fails, you got you owe your fan base. This guy can step in right now because in New York, anything other than a playoff berth is a bad season. It's a bad season. Hey, it's the same way in Vegas, where the motto is just win, baby. The franchise sells that. So when you're not winning, there's no one to blame but the franchise. That's why, listen, I'm a big Aiden O'Connell guy. I think he's really good. But I love the signing of Gardner Minshew, and they're going to draft a quarterback. You know why? I think everybody, I think everybody needs to compete. Max Crosby needs to compete. It makes everybody Better. I, Carl Banks once told me that, I mean, he was a great linebacker in college. He was a great linebacker. And he gets to the G-men. And he's like, man, you look at Lawrence, Ter Ta Lawrence Taylor, Harry Douglas. You look at all these stars. And Bill is making everybody compete every day. Nobody got given nothing. I think you go get J.J. and hope Daniel beats him out. But if he doesn't, you can say to your fan base, we were proactive, we're ready, let's go. And and I, I listen, I hope they don't pick him. I hope nobody picks him and he falls to 13 because I I think he'd look good. And, and I'm not a Raider fan, but I think he'd look good in silver and black. But I'm just telling you, I think J.J. McCarthy is the best one in the, dra in the draft. And uh, if the G-men were able to get him at five, Katie bar the door, that'd be a great pick. Yeah, he's definitely rising up the, the boards. And, you know, you mentioned the G-men. They're moving away. And if, if you need proof of this, look at what happened with Saquon Barkley. You know, in the past, they kind of operated in some cases on emotion and sentimental feelings and stuff like that. Like that. It's got to be business. It has to be yeah. business. No yeah, I want to address that. I, it, I, you know, Tiki made his comments about Saquon. And, and I, I just want to address that for a minute. Now, I've got a lot of respect for Tiki. I think, I mean, when you look at how he adjusted holding the football, you look at the effort. Is there more of a quintessential giant? I, I didn't think so. I, I think he was a great player. But to come out and call him dead to us. Now, Patricia, am I misquoting? Is that not what was said? That's what he said, but he claims he said it tongue in cheek. Okay. If if he did, and I have never ever 
heard anything about Tiki other than he's genuine. So I'm going to give him that. But for anyone else hating on Saquon Barkley, that guy gave everything he had to the G-men. Mm -hmm. And I've watched the G-men move on from people for business decisions. So don't get mad that he did. That's your guy. I know for a fact he loved the Giants. He wanted to be with the Giants. And you know what? It's a business that ended up that way. But that's a guy you should embrace. And I'm going to say one thing, and I'm not, I'm not going to get into detail because I, I don't want to betray any confidences. But I'm going to tell your fans something. When you do what Patricia and I do for a living, you're part of a lot of off-the-record conversations. And I can tell you, the way Saquon Barkley talked about giant fans and the respect and the way he he talked about you, the way he honored you, the way he loved being a giant, the way he loved the fans, the passion of the fans. I understand nobody wants to see a favorite player go or a great player. I get that. But I want you to know behind your back, he has been unbelievably gratuitous and respectful to the Giants and the G-Men. And that's a guy, you can be disappointed he's gone, but he should go with a, man, God bless you, thank you for the years of service, and you'll always be a Giant to me. Um, I, I, I just have immense respect for him uh, as a person. I have a lot of respect. Um, he and I share a mutual friend. I'm not claiming to be friends with Saquon, who also plays in the NFL. And uh, I can tell you it was not the desire of his heart to go somewhere else. But it, it's a business. And so mm -hmm. when I for I'm glad that I'm glad Tiki's come out because I have a ton of respect for Tiki. I'm glad he came out and said it. I also know that Tiki's reputation is that he's very genuine. And so while I maybe wouldn't believe every player if they said it was tongue in cheek, I totally believe Tiki. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt there. Yeah. You know, I think the, the reason why everybody got all up in arms is because Saquon went to the Eagles, who, as you know, is is perhaps the number one rival of the Giants. So, and, and, and what I would say to people is, you know what? I get that. I remember when Favre went to the Vikings and, mm -hmm. and and people were up outraged and mad. Well, guess what? There's one way you keep your players from going to a rival. Sign them. Right. And so if you're not going to, then that's the economics of the game. Speaking of that, you want to hear something really cool, Patricia? Oh. So I, I was in Cabo last week. I took my family down for a few days before the start of free agency. And I'm on the phone with a uh, NFL executive, a retired executive who's won a Super Bowl, won Super Bowl so he's, he's successful. And we were just chatting. I was trying to get insight on a story I'm working on. And I asked him, I, I said, if you were building a team today, what's the first position you hire? And I fully expected him to say quarterback because of where I was going with my article. He said, oh, yeah, it's easy, director of salary cap. Mm. Like, what? I almost fell out of my chair. I go, what? Before a quarterback? He said, absolutely. That's the most important signing. He said, because you can't if he goes, look at look at the Cowboys. Look at the Bills. Look at all, look at the the, the the Bolts. They're all in salary cap hell. He goes, that's he goes, in today's NFL, that is the most important signing is your salary cap guy. Now, this is a guy off air, I'll be glad to tell you who it was, but this is a guy that Knows the game better than any, or I mean, that's not true. He knows the game as good as any, but who's won at the highest level, who told me before he picked a quarterback, it's his director of salary cap. I That stunned me, and that really tells people how the National Football League is changing. That's what George Young used to say. The late George Young, the Giants general manager, used to say the first thing he thought about when he woke up was the salary cap. The last thing he thought about before he went to bed was the salary cap. And it's so true because that's what drives a lot of decisions. 
that's what helps you plan for the future. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, I took it so seriously. I actually took courses in the salary cap, believe it or not, to learn it as best as I could. Now, you know, I don't know everything. Obviously, I don't get the extensive training they give at the NFL level, but it is important also not just to the football people, but to us as journalists. I feel if we're going to cover the NFL, we need to have an understanding of the salary cap. It's that important. 100% agree. So, Hondo, my friend, it is always good catching up with you. I can't thank you enough for all your insight, your friendship, especially. It means so much to me. Folks, please check him out. He has his own podcast. If so if you, even if you don't like the Raiders, still check him out because he's just that good. Not just with Raiders stuff, but NFL stuff. Check him out over on the Fan Nation Network. He runs the Raiders site, does a great job over there. And he's just a just an amazing person. Follow him on Twitter. Got a beautiful family. And, and his little boy that he mentioned before, Dexter, is just so cute. He's so cute. And he's such a happy little boy. You've made such a difference in that young man's life. And he's going to grow up to be a fine, fine human being. So, Hondo, thank you. Giant fans, thank you for tuning in to the Locked on Giants podcast. We'll be back with more episodes, of course, because there is no off season here in the land of the Giants. So, Hondo Carpenter, I'm Patricia Trader. Everybody have a wonderful day. And we'll see you tomorrow.